Hey all here at OS Reviews, you're watching our throwback review of the Samsung Galaxy Note 5. As we head into 2019, this phone is over 3.5 years old, so let's find out whether it's still worth picking up as a backup or as a budget smartphone. So of course this is an interesting device for many reasons, in my opinion it's kind of the transition point between older Samsung Galaxy phones, which were made out of a synthetic leather slash plastic material, and the newer phones, which are all made out of aluminum and glass, which has a more current and premium design language. It's also interesting because of Samsung's uh, kind of naming structure. After the Note 5, they skipped the Note 6 and went to the Note 7, which is infamous for kind of the battery recall issue and uh, Samsung then came out with the Note 8 and the Note 9, which are the modern Samsung Notes that have a slender 18 by 9 aspect ratio display, which is taller, as well as uh, having an infinity display going on. But if you kind of look past that and you want the previous generation design, really the last one that you could pick up is the Note 5. So in that sense, the design really isn't as outdated as you'd think for a phone that's over three years old, just because, again, it's pretty much just one step down from the latest Galaxy Notes in terms of uh, the design evolution of what you can pick up. Uh, otherwise, in terms of hardware, we do have a older 16 by 9 aspect ratio display, so it's not quite as tall as newer phones, but uh, we still have a gorgeous Super AMOLED uh, technology with a 2K resolution, so it still is extremely pixel sharp, and it does have pretty slim bezels on the left and the right, which is what Samsung shrunk down compared to the older Galaxy Note 4. Otherwise, we have a octa-core processor. It is the Exynos 7420, which is still a very speedy uh, chipset. It uh, performs daily tasks such as playing YouTube videos and taking images very quickly. And to be completely honest, it was overkill back in the day, and even today it still runs quite smoothly. On the back, there is a 16 megapixel single lens camera with optical image stabilization. There's also the optical heart rate sensor, which is a unique feature that Samsung always brings to the table, along with an LED flash. Underneath, there's also 4 gigs of built-in RAM, which I still think is sufficient for a mid-end smartphone. Now this device now sells for about $100 street price if you find it on Amazon or eBay, so that's a huge reduction and also is pretty much unlocked at this point, so you don't have a carrier contract to worry about. We have a 3000 milliamp hour capacity battery, which I would say is one of the downsides of the Note 5. We said the same thing about our revisited review of the Galaxy uh, S6, which we did at early 2018, and this is essentially the same phone as the Note 5 minus the stylus, and it has an even smaller battery. And these days we really expect to have at least a 3500, maybe even 4000 and above milliamp hour capacity on a phone to give you longer endurance that sadly Samsung did not provide. So battery life is definitely one of the cons, although the Note 5 is slightly better than the S6. It got me through, on average, about a day's use before I needed to recharge it again. Of course, the phone being made out of glass indicates that it does have Qi wireless charging. There's NFC for mobile payment. There's a standard array of GPS, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, so you're fully stacked there. Phone does come with 32 or 64 gigabytes of built-in storage. Unfortunately, not expandable. That was one of the uh, other cons at the time compared to previous Galaxy Note devices which had a removable back cover. For that reason, I would definitely uh, advise picking the capacity that you think you need out of the box. Uh, so going maybe for the 64 gig version right now would be a good idea, especially if you plan on installing lots of apps or taking lots of photos. Closer look at the design now. On the bottom is where we have that S Pen tucked away. There's a single speaker, micro USB for charging, and a standard 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So that is one of the advantages of picking up an older device. Now the Note 5 does not come with any IP rating, however, like newer Galaxy devices so you can't submerge it in water or get it wet. Uh, on the side here, there's a dedicated power switch, and the glass also gently curves over on the edges, making it very comfortable and ergonomic to hold. On the side, there's also a dedicated volume rocker, which is also made out of aluminum, and again, the entire quality of the handset just feels top-notch, uh, extremely well-constructed. All right, so one of the neat tricks of the Galaxy Note 5 that was introduced here was the ability to just slide out the styli and have access to a canvas for instantly drawing down any notes with the display still technically turned off or at least having a black background because AMOLED screens do not consume any power when none of the pixels are lit. So you can just very quickly doodle away by wasting very little battery. And once you tuck the stylus back in, it automatically saves it uh, for the next time that you turn the phone back on. You can see that it's gonna be saved as a memo under your S notes. All right, so taking a closer look at the software experience next, we are talking about Samsung's uh, S-Class user interface, which has now been named as the Samsung Experience, and the phone has a 
received official updates up to Android 7.0 Nougat, which at the beginning of 2018 I said was uh, perfectly acceptable, but uh, as we move into 2019 and above, I would say it starts getting a little bit outdated in terms of security patches, things like that. So if you do need a phone for work because you want to encrypt your information very securely, uh, perhaps, again, picking a newer device would be recommended. However, if you are able to uh, do a little bit of kind of rooting and modifications on your own, you can definitely upgrade this thing to a newer version of Android like Oreo, and it still works without any issues. So the Samsung experience is a pretty heavy customization on top of Android, which isn't going to be everyone's cup of tea, but does provide a ton of features for you to explore. So on the left here, we do have a flipboard for viewing back news throughout the day. And then the track down notification shade also has Samsung accents, which are blue. And again, the uh, things such as the display brightness, as well as Wi-Fi, all the wireless connectivity options can be toggled on and off. Jumping into a list of all our applications, again, we do have quite a few, including S Health. Uh, we also have some Microsoft apps pre-bundled, which I actually do appreciate because on a Note device, the emphasis will be on productivity. So getting stuff done, not only for entertainment, but also for editing documents when on the go, especially with the stylus. Let's take a closer look at the camera first, which we can launch into just by double tapping on the home key. You still get plenty of features at your fingertips, such as tap to focus, and then it very quickly captures an image. So when this phone was new in late 2015, it was considered as one of the best camera experiences of the year. So three years later, it's no longer the best, of course, but still is a very commendable camera, especially comparing it with newer $100 phones. I would say that's one area where the Note 5, just like the S6, still has an advantage in. It has amazing auto HDR that can pull tons of detail from the skyline, which we'll see in a moment, and overall the clarity of the shots are also quite high. So we can change things like the aforementioned auto HDR. Over here, I can change things like select of focusing, which is essentially the bokeh mode. Since it doesn't have two cameras to do this, it's using software to blur out the background by taking multiple images and then processing it later on. Now maybe the only area where the camera is really showing its age would be the front-facing lens, which is perfectly adequate, it's 5 megapixels, but it's not very detailed and a lot of times you get some overexposed shots. So some sample shots here, this is a good opportunity to also take a closer look at this gorgeous display. I do want to mention that in settings you can actually downgrade the resolution to 1080p or even 720p if you want to extend the battery performance, and I think it's going to be perfectly sufficient for most folks to use 1080p uh, unless they are viewing back a lot of VR content or watching a ton of videos. But you can tell here that the colors are super punchy and vibrant with wide and generous viewing angles. The auto HDR is actually doing a very good job of capturing all the details in the skies. Uh, even in these challenging environments, it still provides some very beautiful looking shots that are quick to snap and quick to focus. So still very much an enjoyable camera to capture images with, even though if you are comparing it side by side with the latest Google Pixel 3 and the latest iPhone you know, 10s, it may fall a little bit behind. But again, for the price range, I think that you'll still be very much impressed with the detail, sharpness, and the quality of the shots that you can get. So next, let's take a closer look at some of the S Pen functions uh, that are still, in my opinion, very useful because not too much has changed in this regard. The newer phones do have slightly more pressure sensitivity in terms of uh, even more levels that you can vary by pressing harder and softer. But with that being said, for the general consumer, as long as you're not really a professional-grade artist, you won't really notice a huge difference there. So tapping on the S uh, Pen's key here brings up this uh, air command. So as an example of uh, launching into S notes, we can do something like hello, for instance, as I'm pressing softer, it's gonna be a very soft line versus pressing very hard here. The line is thick, showing up as much thicker as you can see there. It's a very precise experience because of what uh, Wacom were able to do. And the stylus doesn't require any charging, of course. So you can just tuck it away and not really have to worry about it unless you actually need it. So it's a very precise way of uh, writing down your thoughts. It feels as natural as using pen and paper. And that has always been one of the differentiating factors of the uh, note series. Not everyone, of course, will use the S Pen on a daily basis, but I still think it's a nice feature to have.
and the speaker quality is decent for a single firing unit. I wouldn't say it's amazing, it definitely does, doesn't pack as much punch as on an HTC uh, boom sound or kind of a pixel speaker because there's a stereo set. However, it does get sufficiently loud and there's actually more depth there than you would expect. It does have a little bit of bass. We've launched into the default Chrome browser and we are just going to try and go into the New York Times, loading up the full desktop version of the site. I do find that the newer Galaxy Notes have a slightly improved antenna, maybe that's because this is a first time that Samsung is using this kind of metal design, so it's a little bit weaker compared to, again, newer devices. I get usually one bar more, but uh, still, page load up, time, load up times are still relatively quick, as well as other complex sites such as eBay, for instance, the full desktop version is loading here without any problems. No checkerboarding and scrolling is still relatively smooth, just takes a split second longer, I would say, to load everything. And here is Amazon, the full desktop version as well and the multitasking experience is still handled quite well. I would say it still keeps these apps open in the background without really closing them off. So if we jump back and forth, you can see that it's still relatively swift and responsive. Now, as you start using the phone for longer than I would say an hour, an hour and a half, it just gets sli slightly warm. But uh, at the same time, this is not really a huge issue. It doesn't really thermally throttle. So performance is relatively consistent. We can still long hold to access Google Assistant, even though the uh, S voice is built onto here. So this was before uh, Bixi was integrated on. And in terms of other apps such as S Health, it still works quite well. And there really isn't a huge difference between S Health on this versus a newer Galaxy Note. Again, we do have the ability to track things like steps using the accelerometer. Again, using air commands, you can just wave around the display and various menus can pop up. Using the uh, optical heart rate sensor, we can also track things like beats per minute, our stress level as an estimate, as well as even our uh, blood oxygen level. So some of these things which you can also track through the Samsung uh, Galaxy Watch and the kind of Gear S3 wearables you can also do on this phone. So uh, this is something that hasn't really changed too much. Now gaming is notable on the Note uh, devices for several reasons. For one, if you use the S Pen, there's actually additional menus that will pop up when you are opening up a game. So you can do things such as blocking alerts during a game. You can also pull on this uh, to quickly lock the touch screen if you're using a controller, for instance, or to capture a screenshot or even record a video of your game progress as you are gaming. So I would say that performance for the most has also held up quite well in terms of the loading times. Still relatively quick, not quite as fast as maybe the la latest generation of flagships, but more than playable. And you can always uh, add additional accessories such as connecting a Bluetooth kind of D-pad or a gamepad to improve that experience. Overall, the frame rates are still quite smooth. As you can see here, no real lag, even on more complex titles that require more kind of 3D animation. So that's more or less it as far as the Samsung Galaxy Note 5 Revisited. This is a phone that I would still recommend picking up uh, as we head into 2019. I would say probably yes, if you can get it at under $100. It definitely outperforms its rivals, uh, such as new devices which are released in 2018 for 100 bucks. Uh, typically, you'll get only a quad-core processor if you look in that space, and the screen will definitely not be 2K resolution. The camera will also be less impressive, and of course, you probably won't find another phone that has a stylus outside of the note line in general. So if this is a feature that matters to you for things like drawing, things like editing, and just adding notes uh, without even turning the display on, this is definitely a great feature to consider at this now very low price. Ultimately, a very polished smartphone for not too much money now, so if you do want a backup device, I would say this is still something to consider. So you can learn more details in the links down below, but again, that is the Galaxy Note 5, a now $100 smartphone that has a pretty large display and a unique stylus functionality. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.